Yo, what's happening gang? Welcome to your 10th React tutorial and in this video I want to talk about input references. Alright then, so this is the current state of our application. We've got some items on the list and we can delete those items if we want. So all this is very snazzy, but I want to add some additional functionality now. I want to give the user the chance to add a new item to the list via some kind of form down here. So they input something, click add, and then it adds it to the list. So how are we gonna do this? A few different steps. First of all, we're gonna create a new component for the form down here. We'll call that component add item or something like that. Then when the user clicks on this button to add the item, it's gonna fire up an event to add that item to this data right here in the state of the parent component. Now the way we're gonna grab that data from this input field is by using input refs. So I'm gonna talk about that more as we go through this tutorial and it's all gonna become clear later on. So the first thing we wanna do is create that component. So let's create a new file in the app directory. So I go to new file and I'm gonna call this add item.js. And we're gonna create a component the same way we normally would. First of all, we know we need to import react. So we'll say react equals require react. Okay, cool. Now let's create that component. The component name is going to be add item. Set that equal to react.create class. And inside this class, we need at least one function, which is, remember, the render function. So this is a function which is then going to return some HTML. So let's pad out that HTML. So the first thing I want is a form. And inside that form, We'll give it an ID of, I don't know, add to do. Okay, and let's close that form off. Inside the form, we want a couple of input fields. We want an input field which is of type text where the user types what they want to add to the form, uh, to the list, sorry. And we also want a submit button. So input type equals text. Then we'll say required. And then we also oops, want that submit button, so I'll say input type equals submit, and we'll give this a value of hit me. Okay, cool. So now we've got our form right there. Now remember, we want to export this component so that we can use it inside the index.js component. So we'll come down here and let's say module.exports is equal to this thing right here, this component then we can require it in the index.js file. So let's require it down here, we'll say var, and it's add item, and set it equal to require, then it's dot forward slash to say current directory, add item. Okay, so now we can use that inside this component, we can nest it inside this component right here, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna come inside this div, and nest that component, which is called add item, like so. Simple. Save that, and if we check it out in a browser now, we can see this form right here. Now, obviously nothing's gonna work at the minute. All we're doing is nesting some kind of static or stateless um, class, if you like, inside this one right here, okay? So, we need to hook up the functionality. Now, how is this gonna work? Well, we've seen handling events. We've said on click, do something. We're gonna do something similar in this, except it's gonna be on submit because the user is gonna click this submit button right here. So we're gonna add an on submit event handler to this, which fires a local function within this component. This then is gonna grab the reference, the input ref off this thing right here. And it's gonna pass it back up into the main component, the parent component, which is gonna add that item to the data in the state in this array. Make sense? Okay, so let's work through this one step at a time. So let's first of all add on the on submit event, and we're gonna set that equal to this to reference the component, the current component, dot handle submit. So we need to add this function right here, if I copy it, to this component. So pop your little comma there after the render function, then we'll say custom functions here, and we'll create this handle submit function like so. 
Okay, and then this is going to do something. Now remember, we need to pass up this data back up to the main component. So first of all, we need to reach in and grab this data. And this is where input refs come into play. So in React, we can just say something like ref equals and then give this a reference. I'm going to call this new item. Okay, so then we can access whatever a user types into this input field via the refs. Okay, the way we do that is by saying this dot refs, oops, this dot refs, and then whatever the name of the reference is, new item for example. Okay, so let's just log this to the console to see what happens. We'll say console dot log, and then open up our brackets, close them, save this. So now if we open up the console, then we should see when we enter something in here, hit me, watch very quickly. You can see it pop up there before it kind of reloaded the page. We saw that element. So the reloading, we need to prevent, we need to prevent the default action of this submit button. And the way we do that is by passing the event into that function right there. So we can do this in React. When we have an event, when we handle that event in a function, we can pass through this variable, e if you like, and that's going to give us information about the event. And we can do something like this as well, e.prevent default. And then this function right here is going to stop the normal behavior of this submit button. So it's not going to reload the page now. So if we press save again and check it out over here, this time if I add something and say hit me, then it's not going to reload the page. But notice this. It gave us this thing right here, this input field. Now it's not giving us the value of it, it's just giving us the um, the element if you like. Okay, so how do we get the value of it? Dead simple. We just say dot value instead. So if I save it now and check it out once more, if I type something in and say hit me, now I get this text. Awesome. So now we've reached in, we've grabbed what the user has input, and we want to do something with that. We want to add that to this list. So like I say, we want to pass this thing right here up into the parent component so that we can add it to this array. So how the hell are we going to do that? Well, again, we're going to pass down a function which is defined here as a prop into this component here so that we can use it and we can alter this data. So first of all, let us go here and add in that prop. So we're going to call this on add much like we call this one on delete we're calling this one on add and that's going to be equal to this dot on add so this is going to be a function which is defined on this component right here okay so let us now define that function let's come under this one right here put a comma remember after your last function because this is just a javascript object and we'll say on add and set it equal to a function. Again, we want the item that we want to add, much like we did right here. And let's open that dude up. So again, I've just got a code snippet right here, which I'm gonna paste in and walk you through. So again, I'm creating a local variable called updated to do's, and I'm setting it again equal to this dot state dot to do's, which is the current array right there in its current state, okay, the current data. So we've stored that in a new variable now. Then we're saying take this updated to do's and push, that's a JavaScript method, this new item to that array. Okay, so whatever item we get through here, we're pushing it to that array. So now updated to do's has one extra item in it than this thing right here. Okay, so then we're going to set the state. We're saying this dot set state, we're setting the to do's property equal to that updated to do's array with the extra item in it. All very simple. So that's what this function does then we're passing down this function here as a prop saying on add is equal to this dot on add so let's save this now therefore in this component which we're passing it down to we can reference that prop so let's just copy this thing first and get rid of that we don't want to log anything to the console anymore this time we want to say this dot props and grab that function which we passed down which was on add and we're going to pass through the item which we want to add to the list, which is this thing right here. Remember, we're getting a reference to this, which the user types in, and then grabbing the value of that. 
Okay, so we're passing that item through then into this on add function, which adds an element to the array like so. Okay, so let's check this dude out. And I'm just going to say, I don't know, have, uh, I don't know, some fun, whatever. Hit me. And now that gets added to this array. That is pretty awesome, right? So now we can delete and add items. Now I want to do one more thing, which is dead quick, which is just add some CSS to this down here. So again, remember we have this gist. I'll leave the link to this down below. And we have this add item.css down here. I'm going to grab all of this remaining CSS and copy it. And I'm going to create a new CSS file. Call this add item.css and paste all that in there. Then all we're going to do is require that CSS right here. So we'll say require. And then we know that it's in the current directory forward slash CSS forward slash add item.css. Awesome. Save that and let's check out what it looks like now in a browser. That looks a bit more in keeping with this application. Make sure it still works. I don't know, blow up a balloon. You can tell I have a lot of spare time. Anyway, it works. Awesome. And we can take those things off as well. So there we go, guys. That is how we can use input refs, like so, to grab the value of those references when a user inputs something to them. And again, we're using some custom functions, passing the data back up to the parent component, which is then altering the state of this component right here, this thing. Okay? So don't forget to share, subscribe, and like, and we're going to see you in the very next lesson.